Hello everyone, I'm Si Tong from HKUST. I'm very glad that I can attend this year's Cosmology from Home. Uh, and today, my, the topic of my talk will be Large Spin 2 Signals at the Cosmological Collider. This is a work in collaboration with Zhongzhi Xianyu at Tsinghua University and is based on the following archive paper. So let me start with a brief review of the Cosmological Collider physics. Uh, so the cosmological collider physics is a, a hot topic risen in the recent years and the idea is uh, quite um, interesting. So consider the expansion of the universe during inflation. This exponential expansion spontaneously produced particles with uh, mass m and spin s uh, during inflation. And these particles um, propagate in our space-time and then they interact with the curvature perturbation zeta which then uh, carries their signatures to the end of inflation where the curvature perturbation frees out as classical um, temperature perturbations which we observe from the um, CMB sky or the large-scale structure. From the correlators of these curvature perturbations we can read out the physical information uh, carried by these massive particles in the uh, in, in the inflationary bulk. For instance, if you take the four-point correlation functions and then you vary the external momenta, you find that the four-point correlation function uh, carries the much information where there is a oscillation in the momentum ratios whose frequency characterizes the mass of the um, intermediate particle. Uh, and the angular dependence carries the spin information of the, in, uh, this particle um, and lots of other uh, information on coupling and uh, parity, decay width, and so on. However, uh, one challenge of this paradigm is that this uh, signal to noise ratio of this uh, cosmological collider physics signals is suppressed exponentially by the mass of the intermediate particle. This Boltzmann suppression makes these uh, CC signals very hard to observe, for especially for heavy particles, for example, if the, if the mass is greater than 5h. So this is a major challenge of this um, uh, paradigm, wh this, which motivates uh, the need for amplifying those um, CC signals. Uh, because of the um, CC signals comes from the onshore propagation of the massive particles. So the signal strength is proportional to the square root of the particle number density, uh, which is de determined by the Sitter symmetries to this exponential form. So we realize that the secret uh, is about the symmetries. De Sitter is, uh, um, well, inflation is uh, quasi De Sitter space, which uh, has uh, um, all of its 10 symmetry generators, including three translations, three rotations, one dilation, and three de Sitter boosts. And these uh, 10 de Sitter isometries detects the de Sitter invariant particle production to be an exponentially suppressed Boltzmann form. But let us remember that de Sitter is, uh, sorry, that the inflation is not in fact a de Sitter space. In particular, the, the de Sitter boost will be broken by the rolling inflaton field. So that motivates us to look at the, uh, the, the symmetry breaking case where this uh, signal strength can be greatly alleviated by intro the introduction of a, a concept called the chemical potential. So what is the chemical potential? In statistical mechanics, it's uh, a Lagrange multiplier introduced in the grand canonical ensemble. Uh, by using locality and the Lorentz covariance, we can upgrade this in, into field theory and then um, write it as a local uh, term, local operator in a Lagrangian uh, that takes this form, which, which is a kappa mu times j mu, where j mu is the matter current and kappa mu is the chemical potential provided by a background field. For example, the rolling uh, speed of the inflaton, uh, phi naught. This operator should be able to enhance particle production. So the physical picture is very uh, simple. You have a rolling inflaton background, and on its trail, uh, uh, lots of massive particles are produced. 
uh, because of this chemical potential. The chemical potential of the, these uh, massive lower spin particles are actually well studied in the literature. For spin zero, this corresponds to the Schringer effect. Spin one half, this is the actual current of the uh, fermion. Uh, for spin one, it corresponds to the transimons uh, term in the massive uh, Proca field. And in all these cases, they, uh, it is known that the resultant um, cosmological collider signal is uh, exponentially amplified from this original Boltzmann form to this um, um, linear shift in the effective mass, which is uh, exponential enhancement. However, uh, what happens for the higher spins? Uh, in particular, the case of spin equals to 2. And let, let us um, be reminded that inflation may not be very far away from the gut or the close Klein string scale. So it, it, uh, this means there's a natural um, motivation for studying these massive spin two particles, which could per potentially come from KK gravitons from the gut or the most um, um, commonly known open string spectrum. So we need to find a way to amplify these uh, massive spin two particles, uh, and uh, hence their uh, CC signals. So we need a, spin, a chemical potential for the spin two particles. Uh, what do we need? We need to add an EFT operator in the Lagrangian with the lowest possible mass dimension, and it has to take the form of a chemical potential. It has to be quadratic in order to contribute to the linear theory. And because of the symmetry reasons, it has to break the theta boosts. And uh, at last, it should give rise to a consistent and ghost-free theory. Combining these five conditions, we can single out a unique spin-2 chemical potential, which takes this form, where the phi is the uh, inflaton field, and this H is the spin-2 uh, field, and epsilon is the uh, Levisivita tensor. This is the dimension 5 operator. Now let's study the linear theory of this uh, uh, um, model. Um, so to the linear level, we add the kinetic term, which corresponds to the Einstein-Hilbert um, term action. And the mass term is given by the fierce poly mass. Um, and upon this free theory, we couple it to the inflator background via this chemical potential term introduced in the previous slide. Um, we vary this action with respect to the spin two field H and obtain this equation of motion and the usual uh, transless, uh, transverse traceless conditions. Uh, so this, this first term in the equation of motion is the Klein-Gordon uh, term, while the, the, the later term comes from the newly introduced chemical potential. Naively, one would think that the degree of freedom of this theory seems to be 10 minus the five constraints uh, equals to five, uh, which is, corresponds to the little group uh, analysis in, uh, in, in, in flat space time. However, uh, what we have discovered is that there is a non-local constraint uh, hidden in this equation of motion as soon as you go to the uh, helicity decomposition. And this give, there's an algebraic equation which kills the vector modes. And this effectively makes the um, propagating degrees of freedom uh, to be a further reduction of two which makes it only three. Only the uh, spin two and uh, minus two and the, uh, the long longitudinal spin zero, uh, helicity zero modes survive. We have checked that the remaining theory is ghost free and uh, the equation motions can be uh, solved analytically. You can find the, the particle production number via a, a traditional Bogolyubov transformation in the large mass limit this uh, number density reduced to a simple form uh, given by this uh, list here. Uh, so the, for a positive chemical potential kappa, the, um, the occupation number of the minus two helicity modes are exponentially enhanced while those of the plus two helicities are exponentially suppressed. And the longitudinal mode is unaffected by the chemical potential while the plus one and minus 
when helicities are killed by the non-local constraints. So this is a special feature of uh, the chemical potential added to the Lagrangian. Uh, notice that in particular these uh, enhanced um, minus two helicity modes will greatly amplify the out outcoming uh, cosmological collider signals, which which is parity violating because of this because of this asymmetry between the helicities. Now, um, now we have already made for ourselves lots of uh, massive spin two particles, and in order to observe them, we have to couple it to the visible sector. This is uh, most easily done by introducing um, two dimension of five dimension five operators in the EFT of inflation, uh, where the phi is again the inflaton, and this gamma is the, um, the, the the tensor perturbation, which is the graviton. Uh, so there is this linear mixing term and this uh, um, this this term that takes the form of uh, hij times the partial i phi partial j phi term. Uh, they are, they are, they respect the shift symmetry of the inflaton, so there's a there's there are no uh, back, strong back reaction to the inflaton background, uh, but it, they break uh, spin two gauge symmetry and time diffeomorphism. So there there will be some constraints on the EFT validities, which we consider later. Um, so after one turns on such interactions, uh, one can easily draw diagrams that contributes at tree level to large non-Gaussian entities. For example, the the curvature curvature um, tensor correlator will con receive a contribution from this diagram, where the blue lines are uh, the blue lines is uh, is the graviton, and the, the the red line is the the massive spin two particles, and you can also look at this for the four point function of the curvature um, perturbations. Because of the time limited time, let me just mention uh, briefly mention uh, a few notable features in our uh, cosmological collider observables. So, in the three point function of the curvature perturbations and the, and the graviton, the mix, mixed bi spectrum. There is a helicity dependent uh, cosmological collider signal. So on the left, this this is the helicity minus two channel, and you see these large oscillations because of the uh, chemical potential, which is uh, equal to one here, and it's uh, greatly amplified. Uh, for the plus two helicity, however, the there are still oscillations, but they are uh, very small because they are suppressed. Um, by by the chemical potential, and it's uh, they also receive the Boltzmann suppression mentioned below uh, mentioned before. Uh, yeah, so uh, there is another uh, another notable feature is that the angular dependence um, in the soft limit uh, is also looks like this. So this is actually a uh, Lejeune polynomial dependence uh, of p two two cosine of theta. Um, there is also a helicity uh, dependence here because of the parity violation. So the yellow line yellow line corresponds to the plus two helicity uh, mode, while the blue lines correspond to the minus two helicity mode with different chemical potentials. You can see with larger chemical potentials, uh, the the overall amplitude becomes greater uh, because of the amplification. For the four-point correlation function of curvature spectrum, curvature tri-spectrum, uh, there's an interesting uh, imaginary part uh, corresponds to the decay plane correlation uh, in, the, in, for example, um, particle colliders. Namely, the tri-spectrum will grow a non-perturbatively, uh, will grow a non-perturbative imaginary part, which is proportional to e to the minus pi mu times this uh, uh, and all function of the dihedral angle of the spanned by the two pairs of momenta. So this is uh, very much in analogy with the, uh, the decay plane correlation in the flat space time uh, particle experiments uh, where um, you can detect the, 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 the CP properties of certain scalar fields. Uh, and here you see these uh, odd uh, dependence 
on the dihedral angle. And this is non perturbatively uh, small because it's uh, proportional to this exponential minus pi mu, which cannot be um, uh, understood as any sort of uh, mass EFT expansion, large mass expansion. So it's uh, in this sense non perturbative. It only comes from unshale particle propagation. Uh, can we see them after seeing all those uh, interesting structures? Um, so we had uh, made a parameter space search for future CMB and 21 centimeter observ observations, and we have found that, for example, Lightbird and the futuristic 21 centimeters, there are lots of uh, ample parameter space to look for. And this is the magic of the chemical potential because the, the horizontal axis means the chemical potential while the, uh, the vertical axis means the mass. So as you can see, even with the mass up to uh, 15 or something like that, um, turning on the chemical potential will greatly amplify the signal and makes it observable. So um, let's come to the conclusion. We started with a brief introduction of uh, cosmologic title physics, we identified the main issue, main challenge of this uh, paradigm is the, the, the smallness of the signal. Uh, and we have um, given an argument for the reason why the signal is so small, because it's suppressed by the de Sitter symmetry. So as long as we break the symmetry, which um, is actually broken during inflation, uh, we can amplify them we are introducing a chemical potential. Uh, but the chemical potential has been studied for uh, lower spins. We, in this work, have generalized it to the spin 2 case with interesting new features, uh, such as the uh, disappearance of the lower helicity modes and also features in the observables, uh, which can be probed by future experiments such as uh, light birds or, or uh, 21 centimeter experiments. There are also a few uh, outlooks, uh, such as a non perturbative consideration of the mixing between the graviton and the spin two. Uh, and there's a theoretical question of this uh, apparent discontinuity in the degree freedom count. And we are also looking for possible UV complete completions. Uh, we have found some uh, evidence from um, uh, from the axon SU2 model, and we are still looking for them. Uh, also, going beyond spin 2 and perhaps even probe the rigid trajectory. So, that's all for uh, my talk. Thank you very much.